Well, I personally, from the sidelines, don't think that either Liz Truss or Boris Johnson are doing themselves any favours by this uh, unusual activity of running for ex-prime minister. I think they're both getting their timing and their tactics wrong. And I think that in a period of silence from both of them would be much more helpful uh, to the government. We seem to live in an era of political comebacks. Former ministers and prime ministers go back and forth between high office and political oblivion. But is it a positive thing? to allow room for political redemption. Let's speak now to Jonathan Aiken, Church of England priest, former prisoner and former Conservative Party cabinet minister. Uh, Jonathan Aiken, you'll remember, was sentenced to 18 months in prison after admitting perjury and perverting the course of justice in 1999. We can speak to him now. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Um, This idea then of a political comeback or bounce back, whatever you want to call it, uh, Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, uh, let's talk about that kind of um, come back um, first of all. Is, is it to be welcomed or do you think that there is um, there should be a kind of seemly time that intervenes between leaving and coming back? Well, I personally from the sidelines don't think that either Liz Truss or Boris Johnson are doing themselves any favours by this uh, unusual activity of running for ex-prime minister. I think they're both getting their timing and their tactics wrong. And I think that a period of silence from both of them would be much more helpful to the government if they support it and to the Conservative Party, assuming they support it. And they're on sort of ego trips rather than statesmanlike ex-prime ministerial wisdom. Mm. So I'm not an enthusiast for what they both seem to be up to. But obviously, it's their call and they can do what they want. How long should that period of silence be? Well, I think there's a quite a sensitive period right now when uh, you can't put a time scale on it, measure it. But I think um, traditionally, um, just after leaving office and when you've got a successor in place and an election looming, um, it's obviously the wrong time uh, to be kind of making your own waves in an unhelpful direction. Mm. Um, When I look back in my own political lifetime, not many ex-prime ministers were real great statesmen. Um, The two who were uh, very good on the back benches of the House of Commons for some time were Jim Callaghan and Alec Douglas Hume. Neither of them wildly successful prime ministers, but both of them uh, rather good ex-prime ministers. And um, Ted Heath was a sulky nuisance for years and years. <clears throat> um, and I'm not quite sure what category um, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss are going to fall into. We shall have to wait and see. Well, indeed. Um, before we move on to the concept of, of humility, I-, I wanted to ask you about um, you know your own uh, experience or hopes. I don't know what, where, whether you had any of a, a of a comeback when you came out of um, jail. There, I think there were some people, weren't they, it, perhaps in your constituency who who wanted you to to have a political comeback. But w- what were the circumstances of that, and and who put the kibosh on them, if anyone? Well, I think, uh, really, I put the kibosh on it. Um, I um, <clears throat> was touched by some people who said they would like me to stand again as um, conservative candidate for South Thanet. Mm. But I thought about it briefly. I talked it over with uh, my friend as well as my next-door parliamentary neighbour, uh, Michael Howard, who was then leader of the Conservative Party, and he said, it's not on. And I agreed with him. And... Um, put the kibosh on it almost immediately. So that was a totally realistic. I mean, um, talk about a period of silence. Uh, no one who's just come out of prison is likely uh, to successfully uh, re-emerge quickly. Mm. Um, with the, the Nadim Zahawi um, sacking or removal from government, uh, which, which is exactly what Rishi Sunak said he did, um, I don't know if you read... Um, his letter, Nadim Zahawi's, but he talked about, um, well, for, so first of all, that, you know, the, the inquiry and the investigation said that, you know, he he should have known that he was under investigation by HMRC and, and didn't tell people that he was because he didn't think he was. Um, and in his resignation letter, he talked about 
well, you know, the fourth estate, the media, et cetera, I'm very concerned about them. And that kind of made me think a little bit of uh, about about you, actually, and, and kind of what, what happened with you in terms of, of the media. Um, do you think that Nadim Zahawi um, or someone in his position should not have, you know... It, He's been he's been found by the person who was investigating it to sh- that he should have known that he's being investigated, and yet he was kind of doubling down and talking about irresponsible people within the media. Do you think that was a correct thing to do, or do you think that that was too soon that he should have waited and perhaps been a bit more humble? Well, I, I cannot get into the details of Nadim Zawawi's troubles, but in general terms, I think that if you're in the middle of a political storm as I was, Mm. or as he was, I think you lose your sort of political navigation points and marbles quite easily. And you don't see, uh, for example, that maybe the media might have a point or two when it's criticizing you. You don't see when you're becoming an embarrassment to your own government or party. And you simply have the blinkers on of a kind of wounded beast who's being tormented maybe by... um, criticism, some of it justified, some of it unjustified. Mm. But the one thing you don't do is sort of think straight and you become all too easily self-justifying. That was one of my great mistakes. And I think it's probably one of Nadim Zawawi's mistakes that his resignation was not at all contrite. It was blaming other people. Uh, And I don't think that's probably uh, a uh, position which will stand the test of time. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, as ever. That is uh, Jonathan Aiken, uh, Church of England priest, now former uh, president and former Conservative Party cabinet minister. That was so interesting, wasn't it? The idea of Liz Truss and Boris Johnson running to be ex-prime minister. There's, <laughs> there's, uh, and, and the lack of humility. I mean, I think that that, that was the lesson that he sort of painfully uh, learned, Jonathan Aiken. And do you need to be a bit humble? And there's no humility in Liz Truss's remarks. There's not that much humility in Boris Johnson, considering mm. he was hounded out, and, and not, not in Nadim Zahawi. And also, if you are doubling down on something, then you need to be completely and utterly 100% confident yeah. of, of whatever is underpinning that but confidence. You, but you can lose your political navigation and your political marbles, is what uh, Aitken said, and I think there's, there's something in that as well. Um, mm. um, 